What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Grown Up Podcast, where you already know what we do. We talk about that grown up shit. We celebrate independence, and I got that now music for you at the end. First and foremost, I have to thank you, listeners and subscribers. I appreciate you for tuning in. I'm sending my deepest thank yous for you subscribing, liking, sharing, uh, tuning in, sending in your positive words, sending in your positivity overall. I'm so thankful and so appreciative of y'all. And I just ask that you continue to support the podcast, continue to support independence, continue to support me, support independent music, and just support, support, support. I really, really appreciate y'all, seriously. And to the person that may be tuning in for the first time, I am sending my deepest thank yous to you as well. And I hope that you stick around. I hope that you share, like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on as well so you keep coming back, okay? Um, Now, as you can see, this episode is very long. Normally, I try to keep it between about 30, 35 minutes. Um, But when you connect with someone on another level, you just connect with them. And Miss Esther Murray is one of those individuals that I connected with immediately when we connected with each other um, a while ago. And it has just been an instant uh, blessing for her and I. Um, we've shared these words um, back and forth, and you can we've shared the words on in, in this interview as well. And so you'll hear that in this interview, and it was such a joy and such a pleasure to have her back on the podcast. And if you didn't hear our first interview, please go and check that out. I won't beat you over the head uh, with that because I said in in the interview as well that you're about to listen to but um definitely go and run and check that out as well Uh, but I appreciate y'all for supporting independence and I just asked y'all to go to the description below check out Esther Murray okay tap in with her um, you know, she is such a, a beautiful person and we had such a beautiful conversation. And so I really want y'all to, to listen to this whole episode, stay to the end, listen to every word and make sure you stay to the end. Of course, for that naturally on a wave spotlight artist music I have for you as well. Okay. So, um, Thank y'all so much. I just appreciate y'all. And uh, I know this episode is long and I gave myself a 10 minute window to (laughs) kind of get what I needed to say out and and let y'all know to do my shameless plug. Um, Also, of course, make sure you head to the description below to check out the Grown Up Podcast website, grownuppodcast.info. It has everything about Grown Up Podcast on there. You can check it out. And then you can head to DerekHollandBusiness.com. That's my personal, my new personal website where you can tap in with independent business with me on there. Um, and so I'm just trying to elevate and uh, definitely expand my myself, my brand, so that I'm able to uh, expand my supporting platform and just continue supporting those that deserve to be supported. So um, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to stop talking because this, like I said, this interview is definitely long and I want y'all to tune in. So without further ado, here is this month's Grown Up Podcast episode with Miss Esther Murray. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Grown Up Podcast, where you already know what we do. We talk about life. We talk about everything grown up here. And today I have a beautiful guest joining me back here on the podcast. If you have not tuned into that episode with Esther Murray before, which was crazy enough, almost two years ago. So it's very, it's very crazy, but I'm excited to have her back and connect again. Uh, so she needs no further introduction. Miss Esther Murray, welcome back to the podcast. Oh, How are you doing? God. I am so happy to be back once again to grow up. You are going places. I am so happy for where you are at right now, where you came from. I mean, I'm just blessed to be a blessing to everyone out there and for you to be a blessing to me and everyone in my area. I mean, just being with you is just an amazing feat. I mean, I am so thrilled to be back here again with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, your words have carried me through um, throughout these almost two years that we haven't physically spoken, but we have carried on conversation uh, throughout these year, these 
less than two years. Um, so even through that, it's just given me so much uh, uplifting moments that I needed. And I just wanted to tell you that, you know, in the moments that I was feeling probably the worst or in a very dark space, I would get a LinkedIn message from Esther Murray. And it was just nothing but a beautiful message for me and words that I truly needed in that moment. And you had no idea that I needed that, but I did. And it it was such a such a blessing to be able to connect with you when I did and be able to stay connected throughout the years. Um, and so I'm just very thankful for your spirit and very thankful for you. And I wanted to definitely make sure I let you know and definitely stay it on recording because the world needs to know uh, that you are a beautiful spirit in this world and that they should be connecting with you. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And it takes two to tangle. Okay. Yeah. So this <laughs> is to you as well, because I tell you what you're doing here, it's really echoing across. I mean, sometimes people are going through their own little struggles unless they hear it from someone else who's going through. They really, you know, feel alone. So so, you know, I understand we all go through struggles each day, but guess what? You're not alone. And once you know that there's someone there who's there shouting for you and rooting for you and trying to like pull you along, let you know that you're not alone. Don't go through this journey alone. It's not a one man show. This is for all of us. And this is why connection is key. This year, that was my motto. I am coming in this new year with an effort to just connect with the right people. I want to be authentic. I want to be transparent. I want to be with people who are real you know no more fluff enough of the fluff yes. right we got too much out there. it's time for you to be real and genuine i really care to help the people that are really struggling so you know i appreciate you because you're doing amazing what you're doing here so thank you again for having me here absolutely thank you your words are always very much close to my heart so i very much appreciate it um as you said i'm very much showing up in the same space this year showing up authentically me and trying to connect in an authentic way in an authentic manner and so that's why i wanted to have you back on the podcast because obviously it's been so long since we've physically spoken and I definitely feel like the people need to hear you again and need to tune into you um, and so I'm just excited and today it's going to be just a conversational thing uh, you know last time we talked primarily really on just life coach and what that actually means yeah. and things like that so today mm -hmm. it's going to be a very personal conversation we're going to catch up here and yeah. uh yeah i hope everyone tunes in and of course like i said go and check out the first part of our interview but this one is going to be way better because we're in a different space and that's always yes. better to be in a different space so, yes um yes. Yeah. So like I said, when you were here, we mostly talked about the life coaching uh, mm -hmm. aspect and, and what it is and things like that. So mm -hmm. now that you're back, I want an update about your life, the coaching, right. the life coaching business. Um, mm -hmm. I also want to talk a little bit more about your book because we didn't expand on that too much. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to know what, what has been going on? What's new with you since we've spoken right. in almost yeah. two years? Go ahead, take right. the floor. Right. So, you know, coaching came by just at the height of COVID, right? I am in government. I've been in the government here in New York City for the last, gosh, 26 plus years now. And when I first came in, I was hired to train. I came in at a podium, which is like a you know provisional right. and slowly found my way in because I've always coming from a small island in Tobago where we didn't even have a college you know I took my education very seriously and I took that leap of faith not knowing what fate I will wait for me here right and that was yeah. part of what I wrote in that book with when I collaborated with another a bunch of um you know coaches as well as you know doctors and stuff you know but I uh, coaching I am not fully into it yet because I'm still working government because it's my passion. Yeah. And I'm coaching more so just part-time, mm -hmm. but I'm working my way full-time to go in because where I am right now, even though I'm not doing coaching fully, I am still coaching in a, in dif in a different environment with coworkers. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel that I'm at a place right now for a short time and I feel that what I'm doing right now is relevant because I am helping the people that I am working next to 
find their own way. Yeah. Right? It's not just like me being a Tony Robbins or whoever it may be. It's it's really working with what you have right now. And uh, sometimes coaching is blast. It, it's, it's really, you know, sent out in the wrong way, making you think that you have to have this status and so forth. You and I are coaching every single day. The moment we're encouraging, uplifting and empowering somebody, we're coaching them. The moment we are helping mm-hmm. someone transition from where they are there to where they want to be, we're coaching, right? Sometimes you're doing it absent manly not knowing that you're doing and you do it every day mm-hmm. you're being here people you're coaching you're lecturing you're helping lift someone right so i'm a freelance coach for today but i'm working slowly into doing coaching full-time yeah. but i tell you what i'm learning each day is to be more present with people mm-hmm. right it's not just looking for money it's about really helping people to get a change in their life. People are hurting. Inter- people are hurting. I mean, I'm hearing it every day. I talk with people every day. I mean, I'm on the phone with, with not only with customers, encouraging and lifting people up, but being around people that I meet day to day. One of my biggest passion is is homelessness. And just this week, I was able to feed two homeless people. Wow. I mean, I was able to take them from where they are and take them into a place where everyone looking at me like, what is she doing with that type of person? You know, <laughs> and we think, you know, it's where we think, you right, know. Right. So, so I am a perpetual learner. I'm learning more each day. I'm coaching people proact, you know, I'm not doing it full time, but I'm doing it bit by bit. But it's it's something that I want to go beyond. I want to go beyond coaching. I want. I really want to be at a place where I can just lift people up from where they are. Mm-hmm. I think it's a bigger calling than coaching, right? Yes. So I've grown a lot from that perspective last year. More so is really getting into the, into the individual to really find that person where they are, to meet them where they are, and to really help them get through because people are going through a situation and they're just not looking for someone who can just tell them, hey, this is a cause, you do that cause, and everything is going to be okay. Uh-huh. They really want someone who will be there with them through that journey, someone who's been there. You can't take a person a place where you yourself have not been. So for me, it's more on a person, I'm on a personal right now. It's a different mindset I have right now. And I feel that God is taking me somewhere different now. Uh-huh. It's beyond just the mere talking to the person one-on-one, but it's more like walking that walking with that person side by side and helping that person to get to that next level that they're looking for. And it's really to let people believe in themselves again, because Mm. a lot of people have lost hope. Mm. They've lost, they've lost who they really are. Imagine working in a place where you, you feel like your values are no more there. You feel like, and I'm coming from a place where I've been because I've seen it happen over and over again, where we are minorities. We're in an office where it's like, a particular class of people that are rising and a particular class of people are staying. And in government, yeah. it's an ongoing feat here, right? Mm-hmm. For me, rather than me be bitter and negative about that, what is what lesson am I learning in this? How am I growing in this? What I know it's a painful experience, but guess what? I am growing, I'm learning, I'm taking better care of myself, I'm practicing self-care, I'm learning how to to work at skills that I've never learned before, I'm transitioning out from certain parts of the, the agency now, coming up with a different way of thinking and coming up with a different way of doing things, right? So now I'm more like going out, talking to people, reaching out to people, see where they are, finding ways where I can give back to them. This week I was with uh, my, 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 my alumni, at NYU and I was just giving back to to the community. I was just giving back to the students, you know. On yeah. Fashion Institute, I was asked to help them with the scholarship program to help select students. We selected two students. So I'm always calling being called back from school to give back. And that's where I'm at right now. Uh. Right? Coaching, but at the same time, it's more like I feel that I want to make a bigger impact. I'm not sure what it is. I don't have a vision of what it is just yet, but I know I'm going in the right direction and it's beyond the day-to-day one-on-one calling with someone. It's more like, how can I make your life a little different? How can I get you to the place where you know you need to be? How can I help you? How can I be your catalyst, be with you? You know, I'm more feeling the person now. I'm more understanding that they have needs that 
they feel like everyone else has forgotten about them. Wow. And I want to be that person to be there to, to, to shine a light to that dark light that they, they're experiencing right now. And that's where I'm at, right? Yeah. So as far as the book is concerned, the book talked about my life. It talked about where I come from, you know, being on the side of the highway in Tobago. You know, I just came out from school and there were no real jobs to do. And, you know, the only thing I could have found was job working on the side of the highway. Me, me and my little cousin, we were changing tires, looking at the color of the sun every day. We come home, we look in my tire, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And an opportunity came by where I met an English man, a British man, a British major. And he told my mom, he said, you know, I see a lot of potential in your daughter and I think this is her time. And this came out of like synchronicity. I'm like, I'm <laughs> here on the one day, next day, I'm in the Big Apple. <laughs> Man, and it's like all this stuff. So, and when I talk to people, I said to listen, just as how I can come from a small island and have my life transition to where I'm at today, and I know I have more to go and further to uh, achieve, the same can happen to you because we all have some story in life. We all have some time in our life where we've experienced growth. There's some part in our life where we went through a pain and we were able to pull ourselves out from that struggle. So in the situation that you're in today, what have you learned from that last experience? What can you take from that to get you where you are right now to move you further? So there's a little thing that we learn in life that really transition and we build on it so all the problems or all the fears or all the you know the little hiccups we had in life they were there for a purpose they were there to strengthen us to empower us to give us resilience mm -hmm. so that we stand up and start all over again yes. so if it didn't work before you find another way that worked for you that's where I'm at right now. Yes. I'm here in transition mode and I'm here to just be a catalyst. I'm just here to to just empower people because that's where my, I feel that's where my passion is. I think that's where my heart is driving me mm. to be more impactful to people who really need someone that needs, you know, needs a person that, that's there for them. It's beyond the coaching sphere, I think is where I'm at right now. Yes. Oh my, I'm, whew, I'm filled with a lot of emotion after that response because I feel like we are so much in the same space and that's what I try to get people to understand here on the podcast is we may be in different time zone or different environment or grew up in a different space or area or whatever you know but in one way or another we're all experiencing the same type of things um and yeah. we me and you we're right there in the same i feel i'm in the same spot where i feel like there is something bigger there's something more for me to do um yeah. and something that my dad just told me the other day he said you know don't stop with the podcast you know and don't stop with the the music segment because you're giving people yes. an opportunity to be seen to be heard and a lot of these yeah. people would would not even have that opportunity or, you know, it may come further down the line with more recognition or whatever, you know, like you're doing a great service for people. And mm -hmm. that really sat with me because it's like, even though I do feel like I'm, I have something bigger or greater coming or what have you, that little small victory, as we were talking about, is, is very important because that that is, you know, something that I am doing for somebody. Yeah. I'm putting a, a spotlight on and I'm shining the light on them, on their existence mm -hmm. uh, overall, um, who yeah. they are, their, you know, their, their talents and all of that that comes with them. Um, and mm -hmm. it's very important that we show each other support because that's a huge thing to be able to continue moving forward in life is knowing that you have support in different yeah. areas and different interests and different things that you want to take yourself in, in life and support is huge. And so I'm just so overjoyed for you and where you're at and the space that you're at, uh, because I feel like there's so much growth still, of course, like it's yeah. life is you just keep growing and you just keep yes. it going on. Oh. And, and, and like you said, staying a student, you know, and mm -hmm. staying open to learning new things and learning new perspectives yeah. and understanding 
meeting different people and <laughs> different cultures and all this. So um, yes. I just feel like we're so connected, and I and I could feel you through the computer. So <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I can't believe I went to New York and I didn't even get to. I didn't even stop by. See, I was only there for like four days. I know. Oh, you came to New York I and did. Look, oh I did God. last year in in June, I believe. Uh, yeah, I went to go see my brother on Broadway, and so oh I, yeah, yeah, it was it was really amazing. I was only there for four days, so that's why. Um, and I have a lot of people I've connected with in New York, and I I'm so sorry, but I definitely oh. have to come back and we'll get some coffee. <laughs> it was not meant to be. It was not our time. Absolutely, it was not our time. Yeah. you know, and this is where I'm at with life right now. You know, because, you know, every day I see something new. Every day I learn something new. And I'm taking people on face value right now. Yeah. You know, I this what you see here is what you get. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter, right? If I can help you, I'll help you. If I can't help you, I will try my best to find a way of how I can help you. Or find someone who I know will be able to be better supportive towards you and the cause. Because... We all need each other. This circle of life, you know, it's not a one-man show. Like I said, you know, we have to be accountable for the things that we do, but we also have to be our brother's keeper. Yes. Because I cannot walk down the street and see a person hurting another person and just walk over that person and keep going. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? What if it was me sitting on the side of that street and I'm getting hurt? I wouldn't I wouldn't like anyone to pass me, but I wouldn't want to be there. I'm my brother's keeper, yeah. right? I'm my brother's keeper. And uh, like I said, you know, there are a lot of people who are going through mental struggles right now. A lot of us didn't talk about the stuff that we went through during COVID. We were all at home. Mm -hmm. We came back into an atmosphere where it was sort of like overlooked in government. It's like business as usual. Right. It's not like, what did you endure? My, I lost my father. My father called me at the height of COVID. It was in December. I'll never forget. It was December 2020. He, he passed. Oh. It was the eve of New Year's 2021. Wow. And I almost didn't answer the phone, right? Because it was like late in the night and I'm like, my dad has been extremed for me since I was eight years old. Wow. Right? He left my mom to take care of my, to take care of me and my, you know, my three brothers, right? Right. And I saw my mom and that's another reason why I am, I believe that I've taken this stance that I want to be out there to, to help because I know what it felt like to be me. I used to eat rice, like uh, pepper rice, because we didn't have food. Yeah. Right? We used to have rice, and then we just put some hot sauce on it and eat, because that's what we had. We In the summertime, we had no, we didn't have much to do, and we didn't have much food. And one of my eldest brother, he was epileptic, and we sometimes had to stay home and take care of him, because when you're epileptic, you know, anything can happen, you can get in trouble, you can, you know, hurt, you fall, your, your, your mouth get you clenched, and everything happens to you, so some days we had to stay at home and take care of him, while my mom going and looking for three or four jobs, so I remember like late in the night, we all be huddled together, the, in, you know, in front of the house, hoping that mom would come home two o'clock, all four of us, we sit together in front of the woods and sleep until mom gets back, you know, and that did that. And I, my, my my brother who lives in Norway, he never really forgave him. He was really, he grew up with a lot of anger and hate. And a lot of things could have happened to us back then, but God is so good, right? Yes. He's just taking care of us, right? Yeah. And, and it's one time earlier when he, before he passed, my brother went back and my mom said, listen, I made peace with him and I think you should make peace with him. And so my brother... He went there with a heavy heart and he went and he had dinner with him, with his family, because he's Norwegian family. He uh, he went there with his family and it's at that moment we learned that we have another sister. We had an extra family. We had another sister. <laughs> I found out I had another sister who was a cop. <laughs> so all this stuff, unfortunately, we didn't even know until that happened, right? Wow. So to make a long story short, he, I went home with my family and I remember him coming with, uh, he was very upset when he saw me and he had like a, something like a machete. He said, I'm going to ch chop you up, chop you up. And my, my little son was in the car and my hubby, he was sitting there and he was like, what was going on? My mom was like, what is this man doing? And he was so mad. And he said, all these years you were, you never spoke with me. I said, but wait a minute. At eight years old, you left. You never looked back. Mm -hmm. When I had a family, we didn't even know. But somehow guilt was something else. And I think he wanted to make his peace. And he called me mm. the night of December 31st, 2020. And I almost didn't pick up that call. And when I answered, 
he said he was not feeling well. So I called my youngest brother who was on the island and I said, look, dad is not feeling well. I know he is living with someone else. And um, then after that call, I hung up with him and I said, you know, I, I, why is no one taking you to the hospital not feeling well? He was not showing any sign of like sickness or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then half an hour later, I got another call. My dad just passed. Wow. I I have not processed that yet. Yeah. Three years or four years later, I have not processed that yet because I'm visualizing this man I saw laying back. He had a, he had on no shirt and he was just lying. He said, oh, I just feel this way. Half an hour, my dad passed away. Wow. So everyone is calling me and say, he was making it right with you because he remembered that you were the only girl child that he had and it's like he felt bad all these years later and that really took a toll on me you know as i'm thinking back and i'm like you know people are struggling right i have co-workers that came back into the job and i became their advocate yeah this is why i'm saying it's beyond coaching for me yeah because right now i have a call colleague who whose husband is going through a stage four cancer mm -hmm. no one in the job knows that I have colleagues who lost their husband and all this stuff. I, so everyone is going through so much, right. right? When people came back from COVID, a lot of us just came back and work. We never had a meeting where anyone says, uh, can we set up a time where we can speak with you guys one-on-one, see where you're at, yeah. how you've been and all that stuff. I have been an advocate for my coworkers. This is why they come to me. Yeah. My coworkers come to me without going to management mm -hmm. because there's a trust here. Yeah. And part of this that we're doing here, this is why, you know, if I'm going to be there for someone to, to help that person get from where they are to another, I have to build that relationship. So I came out this year and I said the first thing I did was a 30-day transform your life challenge when I first started in January 2024 to my community mm -hmm. and we went for 31 days with different things to sort of like help you whether it's self-care whether it's practice a little bit more gratitude and mindfulness and these are the basic things that you want to do when you've come from a rough time when mm -hmm. you've been through the storm mm -hmm. that no one understand that internal storm that you face especially when you close that door in the night trust me I've been there mm -hmm. Right? And mm -hmm. people are going through that even today. They don't speak about it. They will hear you talk about it. They will watch you every day on social media. Not everyone talks the truth on social media. And I'm learning that every day. This is why I'm not going to make social media my defining factor. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that are there for good reasons. And there are people that are there for not so good reasons. Yeah. Right? But people are very savvy now. They will tell you when they see truth and when they don't see truth. Mm -hmm. So you can't <laughs> yeah. fake it too long, right? You can't fake it too long. Yes. But if I can find one person, there, if I see one person who can say, like, you made a difference for me, I tell you, that is major yeah. for me. When I did this last week, when I helped select the students on the committee at Fashion Institute, one of the one of the girls that was on the list for us to select, we interviewed her. Mm -hmm. She said, "Oh, Esther, I remember you. I have, two of them remembered me from last year when I lectured in the school." And I'm like, what? They "Remember me? <laughs> Little me? They remember me? People remember? You know, this is why my biggest. You know, I love quotes, yeah. but the one I love so much, right? Yeah, is people will forget what you say." They'll forget what you do. But one thing they'll never forget is how you make them feel. Mm. And if someone will come back and say to you, they remember you because of what you said. And this girl that I spoke with and we selected her because her, she was she started to do volunteer stuff based on what I told her last year. Last year, this girl went on over and beyond. I started to volunteer because once a year I go with NYPD and I count the homeless people because the homelessness is a passion for me. It's something that I really would like to eradicate off the face of this earth, mm -hmm. the homelessness. Mm -hmm. about immigrants and all that stuff that we're dealing with. But the homelessness, when I see people on the side of the street in the coldest day of the year sitting on the sidewalk and they prefer to stay there as opposed to going to a shelter, you may you have to take a step back mm -hmm. 
I appreciate where I am. I also appreciate where I've come from. I've come from a place of of hurt. I've come from a place of pain. And I know I'm not the only one that has that story. We all have a story yeah. to tell, right? And until you elevate here and you say your story, because I'm telling you, story sharing, it's the most amazing way of connecting with people as opposed to just saying, hey, let me get to talk with you and then create this atmosphere where you yeah. just want to get you want to pull people in and you just want to, you know, I don't have the time for the phoniness. Yeah. If you can come and you can say, listen, I hear you. And these are the kind of people I want. I cannot coach everyone. Okay. Mm. I can only coach a person who knows they really want to make a difference for themselves. They really are ready to take that next step. Yeah, absolutely. To change, absolutely. Right. Because we can't talk to everyone because then I'm talking to no one. Yeah. But I can tell you this, if you get me with you, I'll be there for you. Yeah. I am coming from a place where I know it's not an easy place and telling a person to get up in the morning and just take a step out into the unknown, it takes a lot of grit. Yeah. Because people are struggling even to get up to just turn on the television or just to coffee. Mm -hmm. I remember that day when I would be, when I was not well, I would be like struggling and I'm like, is this what people go through? Yeah. So you have to know where people are. You have to meet them where they are. Absolutely. I agree right? with that. Don't try to buy them yeah. <laughs> because they were, people, people know. People yeah. know. They don't pay. People know. Yeah. That so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that reminds me of, you know, a conversation I was having the other day with my wife. Um, I was telling her about an experience that I really became very present in in that moment. Um, and as you're talking about homelessness, it, you know, resonates with this moment. Um, I see I was driving home from work and I seen, you know, some homeless people and they were begging for or, you know, uh, pandering. Or, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the, the good term is <laughs> to, you know, make sure they're respectable because they are still humans. Um, uh, and so... You know, the, the gentleman was put together and, you know, decent looking, you know, and hair was nice, beard was nice. And before, <laughs> before, you know, in, in my previous state, of course, um, I was, I would be very judgmental and very like, under not understanding of, you know, how can you come to this type of space and, you know, just all these questions of just like, why? <laughs> and, and I think, now in the space I'm in, I, in that moment, I felt like that was the complete wrong concept to, 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 to go down, the, the wrong road to go down as far as thinking about a human in this way. Um, you know, like if, if that were me, I would want to be put together, you know, as well, even though I'm not in the best situation, um, as people can see, you know, on, on Front Street, but I would still want to look presentable and, you know, and essentially it is kind of like, you know, you're presenting yourself for a job because you're out there asking, you know, for people to take some time to be able to, you know, tend to you in this moment in, in your life. And so it just really gave me such a profound, like different perspective. It's just as, as part of just homelessness altogether and just, you know, putting myself in that position and being like, okay, well, I, I get it now. And now it's like, okay, every time I, I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm trying to do my best to, to help as well in, in no matter what that other identity in my mind was thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm letting go of these identities that no longer serve me um, in this time of my life you know they served me before uh, only as lessons though to be able yeah. to get to where I am now because now it's starting to make sense and this yeah. with this podcast it, it it's helped so much more to expand upon uh, different people and different perspectives and understanding that yeah we're all different like physically but in essence we all go through the same type of emotions the same yeah. type of experiences mm -hmm. and, and yeah. it's just in different times different environments you know with yeah. different people around us but um mm -hmm. it, it we the similar experience keeps us connected and and you know with homelessness we should be able to be as connected as we are 
with you know people who do have homes um and so yeah that was a really really big thing for me the other day and that was such a an aha moment i've been having a lot of these aha moments in this space of showing up in a authentic way in a more present way in a conscious way um and just really trying to to be in the moment Uh, my mind has always been in the future and trying to build for the future and all of that um but what really matters the most is right now you know because the future the future changes based off of what you're doing right now and so if you're not doing anything now or putting in any type of work now or anything in the now then what you expect in your future when it comes to you is probably not what you expected when you weren't putting in any work you know so um yeah this is this is such a a, a, an amazing space in my life right now and I'm I'm so excited and I'm, I'm so happy to be having this conversation with you yeah I'm happy about that too that you get that experience and know you, you know you're being enlightened on what's really happening yes. um, beyond you yes <laughs> yes right yes we take for granted that wow you'd be you'd be just like wow yes this is really happening yes um, um, so I'm privileged. We do have privilege. We are so privileged to be where we are in this life. We were at this where we are, yes. <laughs> right? We have a roof over our head. We have food and all. You know, we have clothing. We, you know, it's not. It's it's the little things that we take for granted. It's so critical for somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, and when we can see that there's more than just us in this entire mix of things, we will really be appreciative of everything that is coming to us. Life, you know, Tony Robbins always says life doesn't happen for you. It's happened to your people. Life doesn't happen to you. It's happened for you. Life is happening for you. So just do the do what you can with what you have that is in front of you. Right. And what else you can, like the little things, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, the little things that don't really, really matter. I mean, just, just throw it off and, yeah. and just be, be glad where you are, what you have. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? One more, no one is saying that there's nothing wrong with wanting more, but yeah. be content. You know, the little things that you have, trust me, you're, you're, you may call something poison is somebody's medicine. Mm. Whatever, you know, everybody's thinking a little different where they are, depending on the space where they are. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. You are growing. We are growing. Everybody's growing. You have yeah. to just be ready for that transition when it comes because we're in an AI mode right now. It's a completely different world. If you're yeah. not caught up, <laughs> you'll be left behind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, life, you got to take life as it's happening, you know, and be proactive and be ready yes. for change. Yes. He's on his Coming every single day, we're getting something new. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. That is so true. <laughs> and even in this conversation, we're getting new, we're getting new things. And so, um, I really hope that you know everyone is enjoying this conversation because I'm enjoying it, and uh, yeah. and we we are enjoying it together. So. We are. I mean, we're in a familiar play. I'm so happy to be in a space where I can just be myself. Yes. You know, and and when I say that, it's it's so true because. On the job, why do we have to try to fit in? We don't need to. We right. just have to be yeah, right. I'm afraid I have to walk on tiptoes because yeah. I'm gonna offend somebody because they do things that way mm-hmm. and we do things this way. I just want to be me. Exactly. This is why I have to be in business with Esther Murray. Yes, I can't be in business with anybody else mm-hmm. because Esther Murray has a certain criteria about herself. I have a certain caliber of things that I like. My my personality is such. Mm-hmm. I want to care for others. Don't tell me I shouldn't care. Oh. And this is where I'm at. Right? Right? Mm. I'm at a place where management is going to say to me, oh, this is what you can do and this is what you can do. But in the meantime, what I can do is that I can help the customer and the customer is calling in because they need service and I am here to serve. Yes. So you bet that you bet I'm serving to the best of my capacity capabilities yes i can't settle for any less and because i feel that somebody is trying to stop me it's time for me to go and Mm. this is what i'm encouraging people to do do not give up on your values the things that are dear to your heart Mm. because 
you're living for somebody else. Mm. And it takes a little while. It took a little while for me to figure that out before I started this coaching. I'm always like trying to help somebody. I'm not a people pleaser, but I'm more like a fair person. Yeah. I'm a person that believes in structure. I have structure. Yeah. I'm very, you know, people say, why are you always so, you know, you have everything always A to B to, mm -hmm. because I'm really a person that I like things a certain way. Mm -hmm. I am very structured. Mm -hmm. I hate to say I'm very structured. I grew up with a strict mom, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I had a single parent. Yes. My mom was very strict with us because she wanted us not to fall into trouble. Absolutely. And whatever she did, I could not forget what she did for us. This is why I'm always giving back to home. I'm always looking back home to give back. And, you know, that's why I live for. I live for serve. That's mm -hmm. what I do. I live to serve, you know. So I am I am very diplomatic. I try my best to do what I can do. I'm not thinking of me only. I'm thinking of how else I can help that next person. Yes. We don't all think that way, Derek. Yeah. We do not all think that way. Some of us have an agenda. My agenda is to serve. And I'm not saying that we don't have to make money and we don't have, but it's how we do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And people are watching what we do mm -hmm. because people are watching what you do on this show. Mm -hmm. People are looking to see how you're living your life when you're outside this studio. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have to live with authenticity. Yeah. And this year I represented, I went to win conferences, which was held in Paris. Yeah. But I did it virtually because I couldn't travel at the time I was at work. Yeah. But I did the conference and I did it on women being authentic and in authenticity in general. Right? Yeah. And, and not given fluff. You know, you got to say things and you really have to be real when you're talking to people. You cannot build up your business on a lie. Yeah. It's going to crumble at some point. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell people you can do something when you're really not doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot tell you about stuff that I don't myself know about or something that I have not experienced myself. Yeah. Right? It's why, you know, I may be different, but I'm different with a purpose. Mm. Because I'm different because I want to be out there sharing with the people what's really going on. Yeah. I'm not going to give you something that I heard someone say. I'm going to tell you what I've seen mm -hmm. and what I've seen in government is us being stripped yeah. and pulled apart and tossed to the side. Yeah. And even though I'm still there, I am helping pick up those little people, those pieces that I see falling apart. I'm picking them up and giving them encouragement and power and strengthening them because these girls, not just for my unit, people are reaching out to me from different departments. Yeah. Oh yeah, when you asked her, because, oh, this person said so. Oh, the, so you see, it's contagious. What we do is contagious. Yeah. You will find that you don't have to go and look for anything, Derek. It oh. comes right to you. <sighs> what is for you comes to you. And you want to make sure what is coming to you is what you really need and not something that you will discard. This is why we talk about authenticity. I am so hyper on that. I'm hype on that. Being transparent. You know, the, everything is so like hidden in the dark. They tell us whatever information they want to tell us. I'm not waiting for that. I'm sending an email and say, hey, this is what I experienced. This is what I see going on. This is what I want you to know. Yeah. As opposed to someone shadowing that. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, people are gonna wake up. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I want to live my truth. What you see me, I want to live with integrity. I am big on transparency. I'm big on credibility. I'm big on authenticity. It's the way my parents raised me. My mother. I have to look back at my mom, yeah. my grandparents. You know, because these are the people that shaped me. I haven't forgotten that, right? Yeah. And I know this, these environments, we sometimes have to compromise and, mm. and so I'm like, okay, I can't really, really see what is on my mind. But because if I do see what's on my mind, I'm going to get into trouble. Yep. I'm past that now because I've gotten this boldness now yes. because I'm so empowered with myself. I am so comfortable with who I am as a human being, as a person of color, as a woman who's a minority and who have to struggle through life. But I'm not going to let that struggle hold me back mm. because I know who I am mm. right? and yeah. no one's going to take that away from me that's my identity mm. right 
live according to your own rules. You don't have to. This is society telling us how we should be and how so. But we have to live it all according to our own rules. Now, I'm not saying everything that my parents taught me that I'm taking with me. I'm creating my own road, my own roadmap. Yeah. Right. Yes. They helped me along the way to a certain part, and now I am building my own life story, yes. my own story. Yeah. That's why our own story is ours. Yes. It's ours. It's ours to create. You creating your own, so you're designing your own life. Yes. You know, your parents came this far. They, they helped you grow this, and then now you're taking what you've learned, whatever it is you want to take from that, and then now you change it and you build a new. And this is the you. This is what makes us unique, yes. right? You live according to your own rules. Create your own world. You know, who said that you can't become the next Superman? <laughs> who said you can't become the next president? There's no color of presidency. There yes. is what. You in expands right the more you spend time in those little holes this is this limited belief that holds us hostage yeah that telling you that oh it's never been done before what makes you think who said that? is that true write it down did this is that true who said that is it possible is that real is that so these are the little things that i teach people i encourage people and i said listen these things that are holding you back are those limited beliefs those thoughts that are always there trying to trap you and keep you here yeah make you know step outside yeah. because they are comfort zone this is where you're comfortable i'm comfortable here i'm not gonna go out there. i'm afraid to touch out there because if i go out there i don't know what's gonna happen but mm. you know until you go there you see your strength mm. i left tobago 35 plus years ago on the side of the highway i came here on a plane in the middle of the winter never experienced with in my life i'm in the caribbean I, all i experience is my family i left everything and everyone i knew behind wow and challenged myself came out here i said you know what i'm gonna come out here it's an opportunity of a lifetime i don't know what's gonna wait for me out here but i know it's the right decision i'm making mm. and if you have that gut we call it that gut that inner feeling when that gut tells you to do something you better listen because that might be the only opportunity you have absolutely Shakespeare, he said four things that come now back right and one is the neglected opportunity so when you have it it doesn't come around every dynasty you take charge yes Oh. And we have to remember that power is always within. Yes. When they're not telling you to do something, never second guess yourself because it's telling you what to do. You better listen, Whew. right? Yes. Sometimes don't miss it. Yes, <laughs> I feel I feel like you're talking directly to me. I'm just soaking it all in. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. That God tells you to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's it. this year has been such a year for me. You know, I I took the leap of faith to move. I've been thinking about moving for so such a long time. I thought that it wasn't in me to do that. You know, I I see my brothers go all over the states and they just they went off and I've just always been afraid. You know, I've been in this box and yeah. I was raised by my mom too and so I had structure and I had these things of one way to go and you know, and then I finally let go. And I finally took that leap and I took that step and it's been hard, yes, but like you said, holding on to your values and holding on to everything that you've been taught growing up and use, utilizing it in the way, in the best way possible for yourself and for your journey and your path and whatever you have going on in that moment uh, really builds you up into yeah. the, the future moment. And for me, that's right now where I yeah. have finally taken that leap of, of, of faith of moving to not only moving out of state, but three states over. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, oh. You know, still continuing the podcast, still continuing to connect with people all over the world, you know, getting remarried and, you know, building a, a whole different life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having these profound um uh, things going on in, in my mind and, and in my feelings and you know uh, I, it's just been it's been such an experience and and I'm so grateful and I'm taking in all of your words right now because everything that you're saying has literally been the way that my life has been unfolding for these past couple months and I, yes I've grown so much and internally in my soul and my spirit and my mind and my emotions I've grown exponentially and I'm like I get chills every time when I know that I'm, I'm really on onto something <laughs> um I'm proud of you yeah I'm so thank you. you thank I'm you so much you. thank you you've gotten and the experiences and you've got so much to offer the world thank just you. by your person you know mama didn't raise no fool as we always say right mama didn't yes. raise no fool 
and you know she raised you because there's some there, listen I always say that if you are here you have a purpose yes you just may not know what it is just yet which is why sometimes you need a guide yeah right not that you don't know that you have to go you just sometimes need a little push that little mm, that extra little oomph to get you on the way mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to wake up those senses that have been dormant because someone had told you in a long time ago and they told you for too long yeah. you ain't going anywhere <laughs> yes you know you're not going anywhere and you ain't going anywhere too fast yes. right I was listening to a TED talk with this guy. He, um, I, w I went and I did a UVP with Tony Robbins a couple months ago. And this African-American guy, I forgot his name, and he was talking a story. And someone sent me the TEDx that he did. Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before. And I just went through real fast. And the way how he inspired me, because he said as a black boy growing up in the South back then, he's a little older now, probably in his late 60s or so, maybe 70, I don't know, but he's doing well with his body. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all because of color, melanin is really hard to taste, to tell whether how, how old we are. Right. But, but, but anyway, to make a long story short, he was sharing his story when his car broke down somewhere in LA, somewhere. And you know, of course, the LA police and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. he said, and he pulled into a gas station he said gas station was old it was you know he's talking about 1972 somewhere around that end he was talking about oh, yeah. he said that this pickup van pulled out with three white guys and he said he had a flat tire he was trying to feel tired and he said he was about 17 or so he said they beat him so bad he said i got me he said but it's not the beating that worried me he said i knew i was going to survive oh. but he said what they were saying to me you are in, you won't get anywhere, your kind will never get anywhere, you will this. He said those words shattered him for years. Mm. He said for years he self-doubted himself. He said he was in a cocoon. He he just didn't, he was so afraid of seeing white folks. He was so afraid of like coming off from where he was, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was a t it took a while and something happened. Something clicked one day, whether he he's met someone and that clicked. And people are going through this where they've been told something over and over and over again until it becomes a second nature. So you're not yeah. going to take any chance to go there and do something different. Yeah. You've been told you're going to be a failure. Yeah. That you've been told you're you've been rejected so many times and i can tell myself that because many yeah. times i try to grow in my agency i have taken so many exams and i've been on the list forever a hundred percent this percent all this time and they looked at my number they looked at my name and they passed me by and they give it to a man they looked again this my number is still sitting there they passed me by Many times we rejected going up to the team, going up to the leaders and not saying, hey, you know, I'm always here. You guys are always calling on me. I'm there holding meetings for the management. Right. I'm here doing all the stuff for the, you know, being proactive, doing all the project management stuff. Uh -huh. Nothing happening for me. Rejection, turn door, close door, this door. Yeah. And I said, I said, that is not defining me yeah. because when you close a door, they're making room for another door that is on its way to yes. open up for you. Yes. So every closed door is an opportunity for you to learn something from there. Yeah. And take it with you to the next. Yeah. Absolutely. So they're closing doors on me. And I may just be a little Esther right here, but I tell you, if I can do for one person, my job is done. Yeah. It's one person on this line that says, she's talking about things that i'm going i want to reach out to that if that one person reach out i'm going to be there for you yeah i'm going to be there for you because no one has been there for me mm. the person who holds me apart from god is my mother my mother is the only one who i can say when i go through rough patch here trust me i am on my own here in this agency but one thing i know is that i have stamina and i'm resilient mm. I am not going to let anything or anyone stop me from being my future self mm. tomorrow. I'm not going to let anything or anyone stop me from growing, stop me from learning, stop me from investigating, stop me from giving back to somebody who needs it. Uh -huh. they, can, they may shut me down in the government and say, hey, we're going to not promote we, we you okay we, we we want you whenever we in the pickle uh -huh. we, for you i'm training all the new people now 
Why? But I can't get elevated because why? Because I cannot, because they don't want me to match up with them. Yeah. And I have two master's degree. And I cannot because the people on top of me don't have my degrees. So I'm I'm rubbing somebody's the wrong way. Yeah. But it's okay to call on me when you're off time and say, hey, this person's coming. Um, is Esther's gonna be in the job today? Yeah, she's gonna be. Oh, wonderful, great, but don't worry. Esther's not gonna be in the job. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what to do, what to do, what to do? <laughs> Depending on me. Yeah. And I'm on my way out though. Yeah. I'm I'm working on my exit strategy now. Uh -huh. People are leaving, I'm helping the people that I think I'm there to serve right now because there are a few women there that are literally um it's like I'm their bread and butter mm. because they don't feel that anyone cares. Mm. And these people are struggling with the day-to-day -day nine to five. And it's amazing that as much as they're struggling, and I'm saying to them, when will you make that next change? When will you? You see, you can take a person to a certain limit, mm -hmm. but you can't let, like, take the, the camel to the water and can't let them drink, and you can drink it. They have to drink it, yeah. right? People want change. This is what I'm saying. I'm not here to serve everybody. People want change, but they don't want to take the time to make it for themselves. They want you to do it all, but it doesn't go that way. Yeah. My work, my lifestyle, my thing, what I want to do in my life is completely different to what you want to do, Derek. Mm -hmm. Right? I can say, hey, I can be there for you, Derek. You're going through a rough time and you just need someone who can just be there to support you. Even me just being silent, as long as I'm right there, that helps you because you just need to know that a friend is right next to you. I'm there for you. But what else will you want to do for you? Because yeah. you can help, but that person has to show initiative that they want to do. Yeah. And they're one or two that really want to make a change, but the fear is setting in. Mm -hmm. They've been told too many times, you're not going to do it. You're not going to make it. One girl been saying to herself all her life, oh, I'm always going to be rejected. I'm going to go find it. Oh, they're going to reject me. You know, so when someone says that stuff and do it to you too many times, it becomes a part of you. Yeah. It's kind of hard, a hard shell to break. Yeah, absolutely. So we have to think of all these things that people went through. And around COVID is when all this stuff came at me. My dad and then my sister, that's another thing too. After my dad died, I got a call again. My sister, who I never knew who I had, was a cop. She went and got a heart attack and died right after. She was 35. She died in front of the two-year-old child. And in my mind, I'm like, okay. Wow. What in the world is going on? Wow. After that, last year was 2023. I lost three family members every single month. Oh my God. And I have yet to grieve. I have not grieved, and I don't even know what it feels like to grieve. Right. But I know one thing is that, you know, it hurts, but I haven't stopped because I know that something else is going on. Yeah. I have other people that I need to help. I'm not saying I'm, I'm negating that. Mm -hmm. When I get home, I will deal with that. Mm -hmm. But for right now, it's like I'm dealing with that in a different way. And yeah. other people are dealing with it more hurtful, more, more painful. And those are the people that I'm trying to like say to them, you know, Hey, I know what it feels like. I understand. Like last week, this girl, she she got hit on the train. Mm. She came in the job, traumatized. And she st she came right over to me. She didn't go to anyone else. She came right over to me. Yeah. She traumatized. And I can only just like, just as I'm talking to you, I sat. I listened to her. I watched her weep. Mm -hmm. I sat there and I waited for her. And when I felt it was time to say something, then I asked her, she's fe if, are you going to be okay? Do you want to take a little bit of time off? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I did. From that moment, it was a different human being. Yeah. Now, I know everyone passes things different. Right. Every day, this girl is reaching out to me every day and i'm like i didn't do anything <laughs> i didn't do anything and every day she's like esther are you there today are you there <laughs> and i'm like in my mind i'm like all i did was just listen and yeah. just be there yeah. and just waited for her mm -hmm. sometimes the words you don't speak 
helps people. Yeah, absolutely. And she is going to Derek. We are here. As, we are here for to serve. Absolutely. Your platform is beyond the podcast. I'm telling you right now, your Thank podcast you. is beyond. I mean, your your platform is beyond the podcast, right? Yeah. You have somewhere else that you're going. This is a stepping stone. This is for you to find your, just to get your feet wet. Yeah. To get in. And then you're going to see how you're moving. If you stay with the sort of person that you are, if you, if you don't let everything that around you interrupt the things that you have inside of you that is burning inside of you and tell you to do it. Mm. If you don't reach out and fulfill that burning, you know, you won't see how big you are going to be, how, how, how you're going to shine. Yeah. You know, you're going beyond plat. You were going beyond this. I've seen a few podcasts. I've, I've, I've looked at everybody. I've looked at a few people who come up to me. I did, but there's something about you, Derek, that heart is in the right place. And people care about the heart. People don't care about all the words you speak. People care, they care about what they're hearing from your heart. Yeah. And people will connect to that. This is why you have to go beyond here. This is great, but dream big. Yeah. You may not see it yet. Dream bigger than you think you can dream. Dream. <laughs> Don't let your dream stop. Yeah. Dream big. Yeah. Yes. Set your goals high. Set your standards high. Put the bar up real high. Yeah. And stick with people who are one step ahead of you. Mm. Keep, don't be with this because then you're going to be like, here, yeah, you're not going to grow. Yeah. You're going to be over here because you want to get there. And when you get there, you're going to go over there. Yeah. You can't stop there. You have to keep elevating somewhere higher than you. This is why I want to be with people who I know are ahead of me so that I could work my way to get there mm-hmm. and learn what I need to do to get there. <laughs> yeah. That's, yes. That's Yes. Help yeah. somebody here today, okay? Yes. This is hopefully help someone. If one person gets it, then our job is done, Absolutely, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, really love, we really love. We really love strong, and we love the people because we know that we care from deep within. We really do. Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah. it's more than me. I am. I I love myself. I love where I am right now. Uh, there was one time in life where the self, you know, all that stuff wasn't there because of all the stuff that was going around where people try to like, you know, pull me back and make me feel insignificant or make me feel like, hey, I don't belong. And, you know, I've come along with that. But guess what? We are in, we are work in progress. We're always going to be work in progress. And it's the mindset. We've got to shift our thinking, right? Yes. Get outside from the feeling of self-doubt and everybody's after you and all that. Yeah. You know, you got to sometimes challenge that mind. Just say to them, listen, you, I appreciate you, <laughs> but guess what? Take a step back, yes. okay? I got this. Yes. I got this. Okay, yeah. and we're gonna move forward, but with growth and everything else, and with the challenges and with the beautiful transformation that you're experiencing, you know, you go for it. Yes, go all the way, don't stop. I don't care where you're going right now, just keep going, just go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just go. Yes, <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, I'm running fast. I'm here, I'm three yeah, states over so right far. Here. So, <laughs> and that's everyone here. Yes, don't let anything stop you from being the best that you can be Absolutely. because guess what? You are 100% responsible for what happens to you Absolutely. outside. Interference got nothing on you, except of course, is the weather and all that yeah. stuff. You're 100% in change changing your dynamic okay yes. you're one and i'm saying it to you because i'm saying it to me too yes yes bring it back at me back at me yes all right that's guys right. So, that's right it was, fun. I, it was great being here yes. and i cherish every moment we have in these you know these small platforms that I, you know I, i'm cherishing you i'm cherishing what you're doing and and i know there's something bigger that is waiting for you and i know you're gonna get there thank you right so just much. stay inspired stay motivated and just keep doing you absolutely keep doing absolutely you. Thank you so much. And of course, us connecting and talking continuously yes. helps so much. Absolutely. So <laughs> I appreciate you so much for coming Happy back. Happy Saturday. Here. Yes. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Yes. Enjoy the weekend. It's yes. the sun out there. You better go out and get some sun before it goes away, right? Absolutely. Yes. Audience, yes. Stay thriving. Stay thriving. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so stay much. Positive. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. See you then. Very y'all Next connect time. with her. 
Her links will be in the description below. This is Miss Esther Murray. She needs no other outro, okay? Go connect with her. You see it scrolling all over the screen. Book a call now or just connect with her if you need some conversation. I appreciate you so much for joining me. It has been the Grown Up Podcast, and that is it for now. Make sure you stay safe and be kind out there. Yeah, okay, bye. All right, family, y'all know it's about that time for me to say my two cents so we can wrap it up and I can get y'all out of here. All right. I appreciate y'all for joining me for this month's episode of the Grown Up Podcast. Make sure you subscribe, you share the podcast, you like, you comment, all of that. I appreciate y'all. Please head to the Grown Up Podcast YouTube channel where you can check out this interview video form visually. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to step up my game, y'all. All right, so go ahead head to the grown up podcast youtube channel you can check out the video there of this interview i appreciate y'all for um supporting the pod the podcast supporting independence and supporting me and y'all already know uh my links will be in the description below for y'all to check out the podcast website you can tap in with me personally for independent business on my regular personal website and of course make sure you tap in with miss esther murray her links will be in the description below um i hope that you enjoyed our conversation i hope that you got some wisdom uh, out of it i hope that it added to you and your life in some kind of way because it definitely added something to my life um and every time me and her talk it definitely adds something to my life and so please make sure you tap in with her you connect with her um and you book a call with her if that's something that you're interested in all right y'all i appreciate y'all i'm gonna wrap this up because we have one more final thing in order to put the seal the bow on this episode for y'all this month okay we got that natural in a wave spotlight artist for you that we are shining the light on i'm so excited to be able to add another new artist to the segment and to be able to continue supporting independence and supporting independent artists independent music all of that okay so i'm gonna stop talking without further ado let's get into the now spotlight artist for this month tajan one two Yeah.
They forgot I'm not a boy anymore That my mind is in a tug of war My heart's locked in revolving doors No one told me after love you changed That you no longer will be the same Like the fragments of what still remains I hope you have enjoyed this month's episode of the Grown Up Podcast. I know I probably sent you on a wave of emotions, but I hope I'm sending you out here on a bang. (laughs) Make sure you head to the description below to lock in with this month's now spotlight artist, Tajan. All right. Make sure you follow him. You check out his music and you head right back here to the Grown Up Podcast at the end of the month to catch our interview. All right. I appreciate y'all for supporting me and supporting independent music. And if you want to be the first to know who the spotlight artist is every single month, go ahead and sign up for the Grown Up Podcast email newsletter. Not only will you know who the spotlight artist is every month, but you'll also know all of the updates of whatever is new with the Grown Up Podcast every single month. And the bigger thing that I'm trying to get at here with this email newsletter is that eventually I want to collect these emails together to not only be able to give back to y'all through giving you merch and things like that, but what I really want to do um, is send out a survey so that I can see what I can do for you guys for the community. Now, I know that you guys may be all around the world, so this will probably 
be it'll start out like a virtual event but as i continue to grow it um and just continue to be diligent with it uh you know i wanted to grow into something more that i'll be able to put on events for y'all to figure out what y'all need so that i can throw those things together for y'all and that we can support each other um in those type of uh endeavors so yeah so i appreciate y'all go and sign up for the grown up podcast email newsletter once again i hope y'all enjoyed this episode of course all the links in the description go and check them out i appreciate y'all i love y'all this is the host and producer of the grown up podcast Derek, signing off make sure y'all stay safe and be kind out there i tajan take us out of here I know this, but they hate me.